Southern Brown Bandicoots are gardening superheroes. They improve the health of our soil as they dig for grubs and fungi to eat, and they also spread beneficial fungal spores in their poo, which are vital for our plants. But sadly, these critters are endangered and under a lot of threat. So if you're lucky enough to have them visiting your home, school or work, there's a few things you can do to make the area safe and welcoming for these very special nosy neighbours. Step one, provide habitat for your neighbourhood bandicoots. With so much of their habitat now lost, southern brown bandicoots are now more exposed than ever. Planting habitat not only provides them with protection, it also gives them places to nest, rest and forage for food. So, what plants are good for southern brown bandicoots? The best options are low-growing strappy plants like native tussock grasses, tussock sedges and also low-growing shrubs. Here I've got some lovely common tussock grass, which is not only fantastic for bandicoots, it's also great for butterflies. When choosing your plants, it's best to visit your local indigenous nursery or land care group to find which species are most suitable for your area. If you don't have a lot of space, don't forget nature strips. Check your local council guidelines and see if you can plant there. Step two, confine your cats and dogs. Your fur baby might be your best friend, but to a bandicoot, they're a huge threat. Our pet cats kill 390 million mammals, birds and reptiles each year in Australia, the majority of which are native. Keeping your cat contained at home at all times doesn't only protect wildlife, studies show it's a lot safer for your cat too. If you have a backyard, you could also set up an enclosure or cat run so your cat can still enjoy the outdoors. As for dog owners, be mindful to keep your pooch on a lead when walking in a bandicoot area. If bandicoots come up to your yard, consider cordoning off an area away from your dog where bandicoots can access. Step three, remove any baits or poisons. Sadly, bandicoots often die from eating baits meant for pests like rodents, slugs and rabbits. Before reaching for one of these products, there are many safer alternatives to try first. When it comes to rats and mice, make the area less attractive to them by sealing potential access points and keeping food sources out of reach. There are a range of snap traps, live traps and rodent proofing materials on the market that are safer and more humane than baits. If you decide to use baits as a last resort, don't leave them loose on the ground where other animals can easily find them. Instead, use a tamper-proof box and elevate at least 50 centimetres off the ground because unlike rats, bandicoots can't climb. In terms of slugs and snails, try using a beer trap. These are an easy DIY and super effective. Or you can also buy them from your local hardware store. Another option is to line your pots or garden beds with copper wire to protect them from these pests. By taking these actions, you're making your backyard a haven for our favourite nosy neighbours. If you're looking for more information, head to the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria's website. And even though they can't say it themselves, I'm sure the bandicoots really appreciate all your work to help keep them safe. Good luck.